In this guide, we're going to be looking at the AARE, or Adjective Assignable Randomizing Engine. This engine is a very powerful tool. It allows you to create patches simply by putting in keywords. Through this guide, you're going to be able to use the engine to its fullest possibilities by understanding various keywords and how this powerful engine can create these patches from scratch. So let's take a look at how the AARE engine works. So pitched only does beds, pads, effects, hits, and textures. Pit, Non-pitched does only effects, hits, rhythmics, and textures. Now the reason for that is that beds and pads are tonal by nature. They are things that have, uh, you know, where you can play lead lines, they are elements um, that you can play chords with, they're very static in nature, and they sustain. Let me go ahead and set a, um, a two-voice um, version of the Foundry here. Uh, we'll give it a, a nice long attack and long release. We'll go over this in just a little bit. And let's go ahead and just listen to some synthetic beds and pads that are pitched that are simple. So this will be pretty much things like sine waves, triangle waves. This is something it would sound like. And the difference between that and a complex bed pad is a complex bed pad would have a little bit more harmonic content to it. So here you can kind of hear that fifth. So while you could still play chords with it, it's going to be a little thicker in nature. Now effects and hits, on the other hand, are items like piano hits or guitar pluck or flute chiff or something that does not sustain. So a pitched effect and hit would sound a little bit more like is a complex organic. It's got a lot more harmonic content in it, and it may be doing something a little bit more um, thick. Now, textures are a little bit different than beds and pads. Textures have a lot more movement to them, both in a timbral or color perspective, uh, as well as maybe in pitch. So let's go ahead and take a listen to uh, what a texture might sound like. Now, because textures can be non-pitched in character, we can have non-pitched textures work as well. And these will give you some more of those like atmospheric style sounds. So stuff like cicadas and various uh, sounds from uh, canyons and some cool like musical atmospheric type sounds. Let's go back to rhythms. So rhythms are more like kit builders. They're different than effects and hits. They are not sustained, but there's a different sample per key. So if I listen to... And depending if I'm picking simple or complex, uh, simple rhythmic will have kind of similar sounds on all the keys, or complex will have something that's a little bit more varied. And uh, in general, C's and F's kind of carry more weight, either tonally or timbrally, or maybe even on a volume level. Uh, this has to do with how the sequencer is set up. So there's a sequencer that's already applied to this um, when, I, when I randomize. Um, uh, rhythmics are for creating loops and for creating a lot of cool rhythmic uh, characters and functionality. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the uh, different adjective styles. 
So with dark, dark is more of a, it lacks a bit of the high end. It's got a nice warm richness. Um, its characters would sound a little bit more like this. This is a little different from that of warm. Warm has more of a sunrise quality to it. It will kind of have some growth in it. It will uh, give you a little bit more high frequency content. Synthetic are usually created from synths. Uh, we have a, a host of synths that we've used to kind of create a lot of these sounds. Um, mellow will give you a little bit more of a covered sound, um, not too bright, not too in your face. It's kind of a combination of a lot of different types of sounds that you can get. Breathy has a very human quality to it, uh, whispers, breaths, uh, you'll get some choral samples in this. Metallic is a little bit like Bright. Metallic has uh, more uh, frequencies that kind of clash in the upper ranges, so that'll give you things like bells and... Cold has a lot of static, tambral, upper harmonic frequencies that happen. They're almost wind-like in nature. They have that frozen feel in terms of what's happening sonically. Muted um, has to do more with the release characteristic. So a muted sound won't have any kind of tail or release. It's like you're almost muting it as uh, you finish off the sound. Horror is <laughs> really fun. Uh, this will have all kinds of weird, like, disturbing sounds to start from. Soft is very similar to that of dark and warm. It's in between the two. It's slightly covered, but it's more subdued in timbre. Clean will choose from a lot of sample sets that don't have a whole lot of effects applied to them, and it will not apply any effects. Distorted will apply a lot of distortion algorithms and, and uh, use a lot of context distortion programs to get you into that kind of cool, almost nasty-like quality. It'll use anywhere from screamers to lo-fi to regular types of distortion. Bright and metallic are very similar. Bright has more of an in-your-face not so much low end, um, it's the antithesis to dark, obviously. Um, but this gives you some more of that kind of in your face style. Thin will remove any low end from a sound. If you need something that can ride on top of a big, low, pulsing, throbbing, something or other, use then. Pulsing will apply a random LFO or step um, filter or volume filter to a sound to make it pulse. Mm -hmm. 
Mysterious will add a lot of uh, reverb and delays and kind of pitch movement and just kind of make something very ominous sound. These are really good with a lot of the beds and textures. Now let's not have non-pitched in there. <laughs> You can create a lot of really cool sounds in Mysterious. Organic, kind of the antithesis of synthetic. Organic will give you a lot of those sounds, especially in the effects and hits of pianos and guitars. It can also be things like knocking on woods, going out and recording creatures in a forest. They're also, the sounds are a little bit more chaotic in nature and kind of give you that not so much programmed mechanical feel. Nasty is very similar to that of Distorted. Um, it just gives you that kind of, they're harsh like and in your face quality. Complex ones are really nice. Having both simple and complex enabled gives you a much wider range of sounds, but let's just listen to some of these complex nasty sounds. See how nice and thick and beautiful and distorted that is. We have a lot of guitars as well. So you can get some of that very, very crunchy, guitar-y type sounds. Something that's a lot of fun is maybe doing a metallic and horror patch um, that's very nasty and complex. <laughs> Like patches are very good, so something that's synthetic and warm, um, maybe a bit soft. So as you can tell, even me just going through these sounds and randomly generating, I'm, I have a wealth of content that I'm able to create just by simply randomizing through these sounds. Now after you use adjectives, you can force Foundry into certain modes. Um, always use the initialize uh, tab. This is a very useful tab in case something starts messing up. You can always go back and initialize the voice. Um, now if you notice here, I've got a bunch of, I'm just working on a bunch of textures right now. I've got a lot of effects going. Well, if I wanted to clear all those effects at once, I can just go into the template and turn off all the effects. Now notice when I'm randomizing, there are zero effects that are happening. And again, in case you didn't see the other video, whatever I have set here, this randomizing button will apply these settings. So I don't need to keep going into this randomizing page. I can just apply it from here. Now notice again, none of the effects are happening because I have it in a mode where all effects are off. And if I initialize again, now effects will start being applied. And then I can turn off all the modulators. Modulators are things like LFOs, stuff that makes stuff pan back and forth or, or throb. We'll, we'll have another um, uh, video for that. And then we also can put Foundry into a stereo mode or surround mode, which is really cool. We'll have another video for that. We also have all kinds of different mo voice morph types. If you want to just use the XY pad, or if you want to set up key ranges, or CC ranges, velocity ranges, or just have all the voices on at once, you can. You can lock down how many voices are playing back. So I can go to one voice, and if you notice, with the there's only one voice that happens, and it turns off these other voices and locks them down so they don't change. Uh, you can change the ADSR. Uh, on hard attack or a short attack with a short release, long release, etc. You can also have uh, three different modes of um, how things pulse, whether if it's pulsing with a low pass filter that's allowing low frequencies to happen, or pulsing with a high pass filter allowing high frequencies only to happen, or pulsing just on volume alone. 
you can have sound, and so that would sound like this. Let's go back to this four voices. So here's that sound. I can have it just pulse on a low pass or pass on a high pass or pass just on volume itself. So that way it's not affecting. Um, I can also do rises. So that means it'll rise the sound over a second. I can rise it over two seconds. So it takes a little bit longer. Or I can just drop. So you can make these kind of cool little uh, drops and whatnot. And then you can also set it into step mode. Um, the step sequence for melodic, arpeggiated, and rhythmic, which we'll get into in another video. We'll also show you how to make these rises and drops uh, on your own or change the timing of them. These are just uh, initial settings, kind of like batch processes to get yourself into a specific mode. So let's go ahead and look at this performance page a little bit closer. As you can see, I don't have any effects happening right now on the instrument itself. It sounds very much like this. Somewhere. Normal, still sounds good. But I can go through and start applying effects, and now the sound's completely changed. Which is a lot of fun to just mess around with the performance page without having to get into those voice pages, uh, like I'd mentioned in our previous video. But one quick thing you should notice is if I hold down the Shift key, I can actually turn on and off an entire row of effects. So if, say I don't want any filters happening or any distorters or any delays or any rotors, I just want a couple bodies on there. I've now quickly done that just by holding down shift. It will clear or add for an entire row. Or you can just manually click and you're, you're good to go. Another thing to notice is grainers and sequencers do take up a, a decent amount of CPU processing. So we have to keep these things separate. So you can never have a grainer and a sequencer on at the same time. Uh, it's just a limitation that we have within this program, but it's a protection that we have. So if you're trying to have a grainer and a sequencer on at the same time, it's not going to happen. Well, that's it for this video. Our next video is going to be the sequencer mode, uh, part of the individual voice tabs. Uh, check out our other couple of videos. Uh, we talk about more about these voice tabs, as well as diving into each parameters, both within each voices as well as in the settings page as well. If you have not done so, please watch the walkthrough video, uh, the video before this one, and you'll get a lot more information as to where things are located within the Foundry. Thank you for watching.